Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the uh, Committee of the Whole, the Revere City Council. And uh, I'd like to welcome everybody and all the councilors that are present. Thank you for your attendance. And the uh, first thing we have on the committee is a, a presentation uh, from DMSE Sports. And I invite the uh, recipient to come up and say your piece. Name and address for the record, please. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, my name is Howard Kramer. I am with Dave McGilvery Sports Enterprises, DMSE. We are partnering with uh, U.S. Road Sports um, to put on our second annual Allstate Life Insurance Half Marathon and 5K on September 15th. Um, all, uh, U.S. Road Sports is in Dallas, Texas, and they partners with us here to do all of their coursework. Um, I've s printed out some packets for all of you to, <clears throat> excuse me, have a look at all of the courses, both courses, the timelines, which are extremely important for road closures. Um, we have gotten approval from uh, Sergeant Crosby of the State Police, and we've also worked with um, Chief Caffarelli here at the city. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll be putting out all traffic devices uh, starting around 2 a.m. that morning. We will be putting up variable message boards a week in advance. We've started the community outreach to all the local neighborhoods already uh, by doing some flyers, some emails with the uh, neighborhood associations. Bob Fox from U.S. Road Sports is handling all of that. Um, we did change the course slightly from last year uh, after a few, few complaints. So we're no longer going all the way out to Point of Pines. We're just stopping at Cary Circle and coming back down. We added some in the Belle Isle Marsh area. Um, we're also not going uh, towards Winthrop out of uh, Cary Circle. Does anybody have any questions? Council Powell, I'm sorry, Council Penta. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, I'm glad to see that there's going to be more, more notification than last year. Last year you knew, or you know now, that um, this was a nightmare for a lot of people. People woke up trying to go to church, uh, trying to go to regular coffee shops, and basically had no notification that roads were closed. Um, and I see most of it's through my ward, Council Powers, and uh, the President's uh, of Wazowski's waters, basically all through the three of our wards. Is there any um, way you can maybe do a 9-11 reverse call to just those sections that are going to be um, impacted? Because if these people got to get out of their houses, and it looks like two, two to three hours, it's going to be blocked off. It's quite a long time to be blocked off. Now, I know you said you're going to have community impact, do they go door to door with flyers or, or anything like that? What, what type of communication are you going to do besides the flashing uh, boards? Okay, so yes, we are. We will have the variable message boards, like I mentioned. And if you would like, we could put together a not, reverse 911 program, which we have done at other events in the past. Um, obviously, we'd have to work with your town officials here to get, you know, those, those three neighborhoods uh, yeah, I mean, I just think the more the, the more we, communication you have with the people, because last year mm -hmm. a lot of people were really put out on this, and you know, unfortunately, it was you know after yep. the fact that uh, we all found out that how much how long it was going to be closed. We thought you know it was going to cars were towed down in Council Powers's ward, and um, it turned into uh, a nightmare basically for for us as uh, representing the area and the mayor himself also. So I'm just looking for, the, I mean, it's a great cause. I'm not against it, I'm all for it. I think it's a great thing. Um, but I think the communication thing was lost a little bit last year. So I just want to emphasize that the more you do, the better. And, you know, so. I appreciate those comments. And yes, that is our number one goal this year, is to definitely do more of the community outreach. And they've already started. And to take care of last year, obviously, they did take care of all of the parking and towing expenses. but. Um, it was an inconvenience, so they have been speaking with the local churches, like I said, the community neighborhood associations, 
and um, hopefully we're going to do a better better job on that this year. And if you would like me to follow up on the reverse 911, I can have like something I said, done the, with that. The, the, the more the better. I mean, I'm just saying, because mm -hmm. last year, I mean, people stayed in the house, they couldn't get to church. Um, and unfortunately, you know, it's like it was after the fact that we got notified of how long it was going to be closed and everything. So, um, like I said, I'm all for the event. It's a great event. Okay. But, um, the more communication, the better. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Carlos Powers. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, I haven't received one of those packets yet. Uh, to st let's start off with that. Oh, I'm going to get Councilor Pentis. Uh, I'm happy to hear that uh, it's not going into the Point of Pines because uh, when you say a few calls, I must have received 40 calls that particular morning about people that were trying to get out of their neighborhoods, people that had, had their cars towed, etc. It was, uh, uh, to say the least, a calamity of sorts. So what I would like to see, in addition to the reverse 911, is a descriptive flyer, just a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, uh, outlining uh, the time, uh, what the parking requirements will be. And I know if you go to four or five high-rise buildings down on uh, the the end of the building that I represent, the end of the boulevard that I represent, and there are probably a dozen or so single-family homes. I would like to have these flyers uh, brought to the uh, managers in those buildings uh, for them to distribute and also for those single-family homes to be notified because it's an awful inconvenience when you wake up and you're trying to get to church services or visit a relative and you find your car is no longer there or you can't get out of your neighborhood. So uh, I would hope that you would uh, use due diligence in, uh, with regard to this so that it, and it's a great, it's a great cause. There's nobody's arguing that point. But I think last year it was just done and everybody woke up and you know, it was like a bomb was dropped in the neighborhood. So uh, I would hope that uh, you know, all of the residents down there are notified any residents I talk to, I certainly will notify. And uh, it, it would be made a little easier for people to go on with their normal uh, morning activities. So I would hope you would take that into consideration. And if you have any questions at all, you can get back to me. I'll give you my phone number before you leave. And uh, I'll explain to you how uh, perhaps the best way is to notify the residents, in addition to the 911 call. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Duly noted on those things. We will follow up on them. Council Zimbudo. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, well, I'm happy to see that we're here uh, this year. Uh, you know, your race is, is for a great cause, and we all support it. But uh, the planning last year was just a disaster. And uh, I was away at a dog show, my phone's ringing off the hook, I'm getting emails, I'm getting texts, whose cars are towed, who can't get out to church, who, you know, it was just unbelievable. And, and I couldn't believe that we let an event go on like it did without any planning. And uh, I think we've all learned from our mistake, and it looks like uh, we're going to... Uh, get it right this time. And I, I agree with my colleague, Councillor Powers. Any way we can notify the management of the buildings, we, we really have to, I don't want to see one car towed or one person stranded this time. And, uh, and we'll all be very happy, happy and uh, that's what we're looking for here. So thank you for your cooperation. Thank you. Councillor Janino. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank you for coming before us. I know I've been communicating back and forth with Bob Fox from the uh, USA Road Sports, and I know he was very adamant about making sure that you guys really did have the chance to come before us and answer our questions because of last year. So I really want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to talk to us about this, and I think that it was really important because a lot of the issues have been solved, and this um, flyer that you provided us with, with all the information and the mapping, is really fantastic. So thank you for your help, and hopefully it runs a lot smoother, and it is for a great cause. So we're really happy to have you in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Reed. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. President. I'm just looking at your uh, timeline here. 
Yes. That if you could be a little more, a little explanatory as to that. It looks to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you expect this race to start at 10:30, a uh, 7:30 rather, and be over by 10:30. Is that accurate? Yes, that is correct. The okay. the, the last finisher should enter uh, Suffolk Downs property around 10:30. All right, and so the beach probably, according to this plan you have here, will be clear by about 10:15. Yes, that's correct. All right. So essentially, people ought to be concerned about a half an hour before and no more than a half an hour after the end of the race. Perhaps even as far as parking is concerned, it shouldn't be an issue after 10.30 in the morning. Is that correct? Definitely will not be. Well, I just want to make sure that uh, the people who are dealing with the enforcement of this understand that this is a limited time period and that they don't have to be off the beach or, or, or the parking issues don't have to be extended beyond 10.30 in the morning and people don't have to be told if they show up at 10, 10.45 and leave their car there. It's really important that they understand that they can plan their morning about, uh, around this event and not be concerned that uh, if, they, uh, if, they, uh, if they come, uh, if, if they heed this, that they'll still be told or still be affected by it. That's all. Ron Kramer, my father, has been working very closely on this program with the chief, and we definitely will be uh, adhering to these times. Obviously, this is the 1030 would be the slowest person. Hopefully, they'll be a lot faster, and obviously, we'll get the roads open right away. And it's mostly important, as my colleagues have suggested, communication is, is of the utmost importance here. And I think that information needs to be communi communicated to the people that they can honestly expect that you'll run this thing and be start at the right proper time and end at the proper time. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Rigo. Thank you, Mr. President. Just on, uh, on the note of communication, I would add that we, um, that I hope the city would be blasting out an email to the, the email list that the mayor has. I know he has a, a, a monthly roundup that he, he sends out an email. I think that um, kind of a, an update on this uh, race would be good. And I would, you know, uh, urge everyone to use uh, social media to try and get the word out that through Facebook. I know the city has a pretty good uh, Facebook following. So um, communication is the key. And I, and I hope that um, all avenues, including digital communication, are, are used. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Haas. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, it's communication that's the key word. Now, we have in the audience two individuals who represent the two newspapers in Revere. So if you would meet up with uh, Seth and Jimmy and the blue shirt over there and give them what you gave to us, and maybe they can help out by advertising it in the paper. Very good. Thank you. Anybody else on the floor? Okay, my turn. Um, as Council Penta stated, this does come right in the middle of my ward and uh, Council Powers and, and Council Penta himself. Um, now, at what time will they be stopping parking on roads along the route? Uh, the, the course uh, where the runners will be on will close at 7.30. Okay. Um, and it won't be a rolling closure. So even the furthest point away, which is up at uh, right before the Point of Pines area, that will close at 7.30. 7.30. Yep. Okay. Uh, has any uh, alternative been made for allowing these people to park someplace else to get them if they don't have driveways or people going to the beach? That or? is in the plan that Bob Fox from U.S. Road Sports has developed and it is part of his communication plan that he is starting to implement, uh, which he started the end of last week, and he's starting today what, also. What is the alternate, alternative he's parking? He's developed a plan accessing other roads for these uh, neighbors to, to go to. Overnight, they should park over to here or maybe into this lot, et cetera. Have, have they contacted Wonderland Plaza? Uh, that I'm not sure if I can okay. ask him. I, w I would recommend that. Um, contact the management company down there. Yep. And because uh, they can handle a couple hundred cars. And maybe, uh, for, you know, I, I got a lot of complaints last year from the Ocean Ave uh, residents yep. that they couldn't get out to go to church. And they were stuck in their homes on a Sunday morning with the 
going out to breakfast or whatever it may be. But uh, they were stuck, you know, for, for four hours. And they weren't very happy about it. So I want to be able to give them an alternative location to park, whether it be overnight or before 7.30, um, whether they want uh, park on Ocean Ave or if, even if they have uh, a park in the garage in the, in the complex, in the Carabas complex, in the uh, two, uh, two condo buildings. You know, allow them to be able to get out of the, their facilities before or after. Uh, before anyway. Before, yeah. So, um, but you know, and now, are you aware of the bridge construction going on in State Road? Yes, we are. Okay, so you've, you're still going to be able to use that? Mm -hmm. Yes. That section, okay. Um, I agree with my other counselors as far as using email, uh, even to deal with the mayor's office as far as their, uh, they have a bulletin that they put out monthly uh, by email, so I would recommend that you touch base with them. Uh, e 911 is an excellent way because everybody gets that call. And of course, the sign boards, whether it be yours and or the, the two that the city has to deal with the uh, fire chief uh, to utilize those boards for that period of time. So with that, uh, if there's no other issues or questions, uh, I thank you for your presentation, and uh, we'll be looking for a smooth situation to go forth. I appreciate the time, and I understand the key word here is communication. So we'll be working with you all on that. Yes, thank sir. You. Thank you very much. Good luck. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the only uh, piece of uh, communication we have for our committee as a whole. Uh, we've taken a five-minute break, and then we'll go into our regular council meeting. Thank you.